Hello everyone, welcome to News Click. We are here again talking about bank mergers and I have with me Priya from the Centre for Financial Accountability. Hello Priya, welcome to News Click. Hello. So we have been seeing a lot of bank mergers in under the current dispensation and even in in the first four in the first five years we saw a merger of State Bank of India and then earlier this year we saw Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank yeah. Ma yeah, with Bank of Baroda. But the frequency with which the mergers are happening, now we are going to see 10 public sector banks merged into 4. So from 27 public sector banks, eventually the plan is to shrink and collapse it down to 11 public sector banks. So my first question to you is that it, this whole this is coming with the idea that scaling up is essentially going to make the banks more efficient, stronger banks, uh, bigger banks are stronger banks. So what do you what do you have to say about that? Scale at which this particular merger has come is definitely uh, unprecedented, and uh, it's not just reducing it to uh, eleven or twelve. But I think even in, during Jetli's time, he is say the ideal number for them is four five. So that is the aim that they want to have like three or four five banks as li um, limited as possible, four or five global big banks. So that is their uh, the five trillion economy mm -hmm. kind of a dream that they have. So uh, this particular merger is definitely a start towards that. And uh, in the press conference, of course, the finance minister said that in order to achieve this uh, 5 trillion, which I think now has become 7 trillion, uh, <laughs> I don't know how. So uh, this is the only way to do it. Mm. Uh, and especially in the first press meet that she uh, gave before the merger, she had painted this picture that there is a global recession. Somewhere they did accept that also there is a global slowdown in the economy. But definitely India is doing much better with very faulty graphs. But uh, what they did was to acknowledge that there is a global meltdown. So to do this kind of a merger, to kind of make this uh, 21 public sector banks that was there into 12, at a time when you have a slowdown in your own economy, when you have a global slowdown, is I think not learn just says that they have not learned the right lessons because if we go back to a decade back when the first recession happened the 2008 global meltdown happened mm. it was because of too big to fail banks that they had and every effort since then globally has been to avoid a situation like that again that they have accepted that the too big to fail bank or the system is not going to work but to do so ten a decade later to travel in the same trajectory in a condition that is much worse when another recession is already being predicted like probably in next year or some but we don't know for sure but there are uh, reports saying that there might be another slowdown again globally and when internally the domestic economy has been at its worst to do something like this, to make definitely uh, the merged entities, what they claim are not going to be global players, not in, the, in, in their current state or even in the merged uh, state. They are not going to be because the global uh, big banks are far ahead. And even if you merge all of them into the two or three banks also, that you are not going to have that, that bigger bank that you want uh, it to become a global player and they have not changed because they have not cha necessarily changed any other lending policies mm -hmm. so the banks are still going to lend to the same kind of borrowers essentially big borrowers which is what the uh, finance minister also very clearly stated that we are here for the wealth creators and what she meant was mm -hmm. that the corporates, the big businesses and the industrialists because if you uh, recall just of, mm, last month, like we had a lot of uh, companies which came out saying that the economy is bad, like whether it is Palaji or like the entire automobile mm -hmm. industry. So they have, and there they <laughs> really needed to act. Like I think for the last uh, close to uh, five, six years, so many other people, uh, like whether it's the civil society or the bank unions or 
uh, uh, good economists from the top economists, but none of them paid heed well after demonetization, after GST, uh, we have all been saying that the economy is going for a toss. Mm -hmm. But now when you have the industries and uh, industrialists and your corporates coming and telling you, then immediately in a week or in a month, like you have this press conference and you say like, yes, you are important to us. Mm -hmm. And we are going to do everything mm -hmm. to make you feel comfortable. We will merge the banks. We will destroy the public sector uh, uh, banking that we have mm -hmm. in order to cater more credit flow. In so that, I think, is what they think uh, or what the finance minister or this government thinks is that the more you keep feeding into this machine or this giant that you have created and, and just hope that they will give you return, but that is not the case. It's not only with this merger, but things that had happened in the past oh, also. Sorry, so you sorry. had uh, decimated the entire informal or unorganized sector that was in fact taking a great volume of providing em employment, taking in a lot of people. And you have decimated that. You have also decimated the smaller, middle rung, even businesses like with GST. So you have you know completely you know those are your sources of credits where it caters to a more volume of people and which can in turn revive your economy but you have completely done away with those things and you're not bothered to revive any of that mm. but what you are saying is like you because you have infrastructure projects you have other the Sagar Mala, Bharat Mala and all these big projects that you have, that is your priority mm. and those are the very sectors that will get affected. Like even uh, if we see uh, where the NPA problem kind of starts, mm. it's immediately, uh, even though around 2004-05 it, it was there, but it hit home actually post-recession because even though your banks were insulated because they had public, they were public banks and they were deposit uh, driven banks and so they did not have uh, market exposure much. So the banks were insulated but the businesses were not, mm. right. So they were dependent on many mm. other external factors. So when that went down, then your banks got mm. this N NPA kind of building up, building up, building up till 2014 or 15 till you actually took stock of it. and because you kept lending to the same thing that was going down the drain and mm. now again you are you want to do the same thing mm. but because now your banks are facing a lot of problems have a big baggage of NPA and they are uh, at a loss so what you're trying to do is how else can I put them in permutation combination so that they will again you know, lend to this yeah, and yeah, put yeah. money in the same drain that has been draining the banks for like the last 10 years. Mm. So, so it's going to help certain big players, private players too, for and the create time those being. monopolies. Yeah, for the time being the time again, being. because that sector, like at least like say coal, like there was a huge, uh, I mean, I one of the infrastructure projects, whether it is mining or the thermal uh, power plants, like 36, uh, thermal power plants have failed and where the banks have been primary lenders right mm. and uh, today you want banks to put in more money in those same things without changing any other conditions mm. this is not going to help it's not going to play out mm. so what you're going to do is you're going to you know create these uh, four 12 banks now or maybe uh, four or five eventually and they will again suffer this NPA crisis mm. because you have fundamentally not altered, you know, your course. You have not done mm. a course correction. You are doing the same thing. So eventually, when the next uh, crisis is going mm. to happen, maybe with the infusion of uh, recapitalization, for the time being, you might be able to say, no, no, things are fine. But mm. they are not going to be fine because there has not been a course correction. Mm. So then, when these banks, this four, five ones again start failing then they will be too big to fail for your mm. uh, country and what you will do in this me meantime is to privatize them because yeah. that has been the uh, yeah the target for the last I think 25 years mm. that you you need to privatize banks bring down the public shares the government shares down to 33 percent is what the Narasimham committee wa had recommended mm. and I think mm. you would 
do that and so you would have these private banks which will be too big to fail which will be failing and then you will put in the public money as bailout which exactly bank. happened in 2008, in 2008. Yeah. and then so it's like a very long long drawn process. process i don't see it as just a merger announcement like if you look mm. at the announcement mm. there are two parts of it one is the merger and which is something a lot of people have discussed and the other is in terms of good the governance of the bank or the mm, changes that are made internally which mm. is i think much more uh, important because it talks about empowering the board and if you take the board the board has been the primary reason for if you say the NPA crisis because they yeah, have been the ones who have uh, sanctioned these loans these mm. loans because of the, the size of the loans they are not sa sanctioned at a branch level or a lower level but by the boards and they have been also the ones who have uh, evergreened these loans knowing that there is a NPA, restructured them and sat through all these things and without the knowledge like and leaving the employee and very systematically mm. because that is one way where you know there could be resistance, one area whether yeah. it is the officers or the un uh, union representatives who could resist this idea. Mm. But they have been kept out of it. So the board along the RBI would have had a representative, the finance ministry has a representative. Mm and the board members so all of them who have in or uh, who are actually uh, uh, to be held accountable for the crisis are the ones who are now empowered yeah. saying that you have more power so you can now uh, take a call on all the i think staff officers so they can now hire and fire mm -hmm. or you know determine the duration or the period of you know other board members so the board has become like this new entity that will control everything mm -hmm. and where you, they ha and that is another reason why the officers have come come out very strongly against the merger so because the board will now review them on a much more stricter this thing that you mm -hmm. cannot you have to um, you know perform within the idea that they are saying and you also have uh, this chief uh, risk officer and it is like you put a lot of restrictions on the public sector banks and like in the name of making them we are going to make them more efficient we are going to uh, you know make them uh, kind of give credits but towards what end like it is not there to serve the public anymore yeah. you want to make them efficient or like um, regulate them or you this entire risk based assessment is that keeping in check the health of the bank is you want to basically clear the all your bad loans or clear your books and either you you you're going to do it by recap through recapitalization mm -hmm. or you know you're going to at the end maybe you know if you want to gain more capital sell your shares so you're going to do all of these things and the primary uh, motive here is either uh, clear the books, lend more to the corporates and both of this will ultimately lead to privatization. What do you think, the, what are the measures that the government should be taking uh, as opposed to the ones that they are? What do, you, what do you think that the way forward should be, even though that's probably not what the decisions they might make, but still, I mean, which is something that will actually try which revive the economy or at least get it back on track? What they should have done before, like even in terms of the NPA crisis, uh, was that you need instead of restructuring like what they should have identified the sectors and then stop change the lending policies mm. right uh, because and especially the banks uh, commercial banks which are uh, mainly running on the deposits right and they are not meant to give these large scale loans in the first place mm -hmm. and they knew it the rbi knew it the government knew it everybody knew it and they agreed when they shifted uh, the burden of large scale lending from the uh, previously existed in the developmental banks to uh, the co commercial banks they knew that there is a mismatch they, they cannot this is not something that these banks were meant to do but they were forced to do it and so it is okay to take public money and do anything with it for your private gains 
and it's oh, but then we will now regulate the banks so the fault is somewhere else and you are not still try attempting to even scratch the surface or even think in terms of how do we then put checks and balance in terms of when you are lending to these large scale uh, projects if you think like no infra we have to lend to infrastructure and uh, coal and all these things then put checks and balances have some due diligence if i'm not saying that is what one should ideally they should not there has you need to that is a you know duty of developmental banks and ideally large scale lending should all go to the developmental banks and commercial banks should concentrate on small and medium and retail loans that is the ideal case that is what one should do mm. but give, right now that is not what is happening i'm not seeing that happening anytime soon so if you are going to lend have due diligence at least like but that also they do not want to do that so we need to fundamentally change the lending policies rethink about responsible banking with social and environmental safeguards and most importantly also go back to developmental banks and which interestingly the finance minister mentioned when she talked about infrastructure um, lending she said we would uh, very uh, she just touched upon it there's an idea of going back to developmental banks mm -hmm. but the problem with that even yes developmental banks are the ones that should support um, should lend for uh, large scale projects mm -hmm. but initially when developmental banks existed their primary source of fund was budgetary allocation and the surplus of the R rbi mm -hmm. but at a okay, at but now when sh the finance minister is saying that we are going back to the developmental bank model but the government has already taken the rbi yeah. surplus who is going to fund the develop what kind yeah. of a model is this yeah. developmental yeah. banks so there we really don't know what they are thinking or was or was it just like it cannot be a one off statement but you'd never know yeah. with all the half truths and <laughs> lie oops blatant lies and that they say you never know what they can claim anything exactly. okay thank you so much priya for uh, breaking down uh, why the bank mergers are not necessarily going to actually strengthen some of these banks which are ridden with npas and uh, we'll keep bringing to you more interviews uh, and information about bank mergers so stay tuned to our youtube channel on news click thank you for watching Thank <laughs> you.